make a video here and show this implementation of the sorting depth buffer for the archives to have it on record to show how this worked out. That the buffer is on and that we have these uh, colored areas that are being masked out. And if we, we can cycle through here and see this is these different views being recorded into these different buffers. So this is the static geometry buffer, which is which these colors represent the the uh, sorting value, and the ramps are not included because they don't ever have potential to occlude anything. And if we cycle through here, this is the um, this is the primary view with with the uh, sort sorting depth visualized, and here is another view of um, of just the layers, the levels, which are drawn to see how they uh, see how they look, because these these uh, sprite tiles are split dynamically as they're drawn and cut into levels, which preserves um, flat planes throughout the drawing cycle, which is which was the primary reason that I started all of this, so there could be planes where you could put down like uh, you know flat objects easily and there would not be problems with them overlapping with uh, other flat tiles in front of them due to the way the sorting algorithm works. It's a very unfortunate drawback of doing it like that. But uh, okay, and this is the, the dynamic buffer which holds the, the players in it. So we have two, two buffers, the static geometry buffer and then the dynamic geometry buffer for players. When we put them together here, we can see that um, given certain conditions of the sorting levels and depths, uh, the depth being the sorting key, that we're able to make determinations here of um, what is occluding what and if that should be and how they should be masked out in order to uh, reduce drawing artifacts. So if we cycle through here, this is with the um, with the uh, sort buffer off. So we can see this guy right here, his head's being clipped by this top level, this tile behind him. In this case, the second level of the um, the second level up of the sprite is being clipped by the uh, by a higher level of this tile, and this is happening because it's being drawn on top of the tile behind it because it's on a ramp and it is transitioning through levels. And in this, you can see that same same condition here. The top level is popping over the back, which is actually that's that is realistic in terms of geometry, because that arm would, if that was in three D, that arm would still pass through that. So I don't know if you want to consider that a a problem or not, but it would you know it was nice when you did this in pure two D just to have that clipped behind it. You know, this is not that big of a problem. This, on the other hand, is a, a problem. When you're going through ramps as well, you see this problem where, I think we can see this here. Sorry, that collision's a little messed up. Yeah, we can see that ring here is passing through the sky because it is on a higher sorting level. If we, here is the buffer with the debug colors turned off, and you can see these things masked through. And there are some problems with how these with how these sprites are, that I think would be cleaned up. But what is not cleaned up though is the fact that if we zoom in we can see that um, alpha blending is going to be just necessarily disrupted by this process because it is in, the, in an order where the blending is not accurate as it was originally. So we get this, so we can get, um, maybe hard to see, but in this case where this top tile was masked out, it's now blending or the, uh, the the player's head is not blending with something behind that actual tile which is causing it to look a little funky and again it's not not really a problem here we can see if we go along this edge here there's some weirdness I don't know it uh, it works you know it cleaned up cleaned up some of these problems here so I guess I just state the verdict here this was exceedingly complicated <laughs> to set up. It is expensive because it requires these two depth buffers, right? These two full screen FBOs. 
which by the way, I don't, if we uh, look at this again, we can see that this is actually in a lower resolution, which I, which you could scale down or up in order to just uh, for performance's sake. So this could be more accurate and I kept it at a lower level, but it's, you know, it's gonna kill all the hardware. It's even kind of rough on this hardware too to be drawing all of that. The scene had to be drawn twice, really quite expensive. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this, <laughs> if you could justify this on modern hardware, it was quite a thing to do, probably something not worth, maybe it probably was a bad idea. <laughs> But um, it has some advantages. It's, uh, yeah, advantages aren't exactly quite clear yet if you were to do this in pure 3D. Some of these masking effects you could not do in 3D because this, these sprites would just necessarily clip through that geometry. And you would just have to, you know, be more careful about the kind of art you're using, which is not necessarily a problem, right? So again, I, I don't know if this is really quite justified or not, but uh, yeah that going through there and it's still always going to be buggy not perfect in certain cases you know there is no way to make this work properly so um, yeah I will just uh, you can look at the alpha blending here is that's more disruptive you can see that how that's sloppy you can clean that up with a larger with a higher resolution buffer but still that's just the blending issue so yeah I think I'll leave it at that okay